We are so excited because it is that time of the week where Drew Barrymore shares her best of Drew's news with our viewers. Yeah, we're very lucky because host of the Drew Barrymore Show, Drew, is in the studio with us, Yay! along with co-host Ross Matthews. First time, welcome. Thank you. welcome, Ross. Hi, hi. <laughs> really, really good to see you guys. There's you nothing too. better than a duo, you know. I know. I know. Well, there's one thing better. A quadruple? Hey. A quadruple? And quadruples are trending. <laughs> Always so, trending. Yes, Always. exactly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's get into it. So right. we're talking about parenting, right? A new trend in parenting, and I'm about to be a parent. Congratulations. Like, congratulations. I know. Yes. So what is this new trend that I need to be aware of? Well, let's play. All right, let's say the clip. <laughs> yeah, take a look. Next, the New York Post reports there's a new parenting trend, and it's called sittervising. Coined by Seattle mom Susie Allison, it's the opposite of helicopter parent. It means stepping back and supervising your pl your kids' play dates from a seated position. <laughs> Let them do their thing, play amongst themselves, healthy independence. So I was saying, we were talking about this, Drew, earlier on CBS Mornings. Like, Nate was saying how, like, when we were kids, we, our parents had no idea that we were sometimes practically in the next state totally. when we were out with our friends on our bikes. 100%. Yeah, my parents were like, yeah. be home by midnight. Be home by when <laughs> the sun goes down. Right, exactly. and the street lights. Too yeah. much yeah. independence, but it's... I, it, oh, you, right? I mean... Uh, hello? Normal, yes, I mean, <laughs> your poster child. Yeah. Yeah. A normal situation, Be home however, when Studio 54 closes. That yes, was, yeah. exactly. <laughs> um, I loved, though, the lack of fear mm. that parents mm. had. And I really do believe it was the milk carton and like mm -hmm. a societal shift in news yeah. right. of kidnappings that truly changed the game forever. Yeah. Adam Walsh, Pats, when we were kids, yeah, Aton totally Pats here in New York, was the kid that was in, the first missing in New York City, yeah. and he was Adam on Walsh, Adam Walsh, yeah. 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 and they made the TV movie. Like I feel like that was the beginning of the end of trust. Um, in our society that our kids were safe without our supervision. I agree. However, I think it's matriculated into, like Gail was saying, you know, her daughter Kirby is like, we don't say no. Yeah, I was you like. Know? And you're like, well, God, what do you say? What or, do you, you know, say? People tell me you can't say that your daughter is pretty. You have to say she's smart. And I'm like, oh, gosh, yes. I want to throw up all the papers. <laughs> yeah. So wherever that pretty little middle is, that balance where we feel like we have an eye on our kids, gosh, we can track them nowadays. Mm -hmm. So that should give us a little more security in a little bit of the sitter versing like oh it's not about stopping every fight and and fixing everything for them how are they going to learn regulation mm -hmm, mm -hmm. otherwise so you step in when you know you need to step in right. and that comes as a parent. I was a parent who did not feel like I knew what I was doing the first few really? years. Really? Yeah, well, I, I really did. I think most parents, parents yeah, don't. Right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. People you know, are like boundaries and and this and that. And I was like, what are those? <laughs> and, and, you know, hygiene right. and healthy eating and all of this stuff. And and you feel judged and you feel like a failure. But all of a sudden, this instinct really does kick in. And I just think. We've got to find the balance from how we used to be raised yeah. to how we're raising now. Totally. But I actually thought to myself, I don't think this is a new trend. Uh, this happens. Sit yes, because we do it. We call it the children are raising themselves. That's when the parents have a play date, mm -hmm. and you tell the children to go upstairs yeah. and don't come down till we're done. <laughs> right? And we say the children are raising themselves for the next hour. Uh -huh. Don't come down till the Disney movie's off or whatever. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I just tell you the story that my dad used to say when you come home from school, nobody in the house within 100 yards. Right. He, so he wants his like rest time Human for space. a couple of hours after he gets home from work. I don't want to hear a peep yeah. out of these kids. I don't care what age they are. Yeah. Be away from also, the house. Also, it is different for every family. Totally. So this one size fits all approach does not work for me. Let's stop judging each other. Mm. Let's help each other. Embrace each other's, I love this word, styles. Because yes. it's not negative and it feels open minded and open hearted. Mm -hmm. It's really different for everyone. I wonder though, are you more of a hover or a sitter visor? Yes. Which what one, do you where do you through? lean and where do you have to pull yourself back from? I've tried it all mm. and I wanted to know like what felt right. And I didn't love the hovering over every move. And yeah. I have two girls, so when they would fight, people would be like, Oh, they're fighting. I'm like, uh, the one thing I've always heard about siblings is that they'll fight. Right. 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 And hopefully be best friends for life in the end. Yeah. And you know, and during at, at times. So I've tried to become more and more trusting. Um, but, you know, my kids are nine and 10 and I'm in the phase of like talks and real stuff. Mm -hmm. The world is happening much quicker than it did for, you know, That's so most, true. Of for us. most of us so yeah, true. Um, because of social media, yeah. because of access. So 
in some ways, I feel more equipped to deal with that, having gone through that myself. Like, ooh, this is armor I can use. Um, I think also, like, finding traditional values and, like, old world things combined with, like, new world tech and access. Mm -hmm. Like, kick it old school here and there. Mm -hmm. Kick it new school here and there. When appropriate. Find the balance. Mm -hmm. And by the way, this balance is a word that has irritated me my whole life because it's eluded me. I think I'm just so bullish to find it, especially with kids. My kids have made me more um, equipped than I ever made myself. Oh, yeah, and yeah. when she talks about her kids. That's lovely. Yeah. They're the best thing no. that ever they happened to, to me. Grow you. They help to grow you as yeah. a person. And you know? they teach you who you are more than you will ever know that without them. So but true. I also love otherhood. You don't want to have kids? You want to travel the world? Otherhood, yes. See, I have chihuahuas, so, okay? okay. <laughs> and for the record, I am a hover daddy, okay? Just when it comes to daddy. Oh, for sure. Um, yeah, good potty, good potty. Good potty. <laughs> <laughs> so let us speak of otherhood. Yes, the yeah. uh, otherhood. Drew's got some dating advice, some new dating advice advice from Variety. Yes. According to Cosmopolitan, your fourth date with a new partner could be, or should be, a day date. Mm. Whereas most night dates are dinner and a movie, day dates allow for more creativity and therefore more opportunity to really get to know your partner. Do like, like things like, uh, do they like stinky cheese from the farmer's market? You can find that out. <laughs> or do they stop and look at every piece of art in the museum? I'd like to know that too. That's cute. Most oh, importantly, do you like spending time with them in the sunlight? Um, <laughs> or, or can we just say, what do they look like well, they in the like sunlight? The sunlight. <laughs> no, not that that is it. exactly Ross, what I that's thought. That's the point. Thank you. Everybody looks great Zinger. at 10 o'clock yeah. with candlelight. Oh, I could get into this. Uh-huh. Let me see what you look like at high noon. Maybe, yeah, 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 right. Okay. Thank you. And, and the sun and is a, right up there. And yeah. a couple of glasses of vino. I'm Usually, you go, beer right, exactly. Totally. So I, I love this idea. And also, you know, if the date is going well, it can extend. If totally. it's not, you can say, look, I have something else happening this evening. I have to leave. Thank you. Well, so, I you know, that's what yeah. that meant. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> but I think it, when you're dating in the early stages, you should always put yourself in a position where you have an exit strategy. True. And a plan. Meet for See, a drink, this is not where a dinner. I've always failed. No <laughs> exit strategy. Yeah. People have told me, like, while I've been dating, like, don't do dinner. And I didn't know that. I'm like, it's always dinner. Yeah. And I, I actually prefer a daytime activity over dinner. Like, I don't want to meet you and be like, Ugh. Well, because you so don't true. have to spend three hours eating with like, food eating. in my so teeth. True. I want to, like, mm-hmm. I would rather walk around a museum yeah. or take a walk through a neighborhood, discover stores. Yeah. Have an adventure, like so. Mm. I'm into day dating mm-hmm. activities. Uh, what? Uh, what? I, I no. need a cocktail. I'm I, sorry. I do too. Gonna, I absolutely. Think, uh, I'm, I'm like dinner, or even yeah. just a cocktail. <laughs> yeah. Like, or or if we're gonna do a day date, let's meet at the bar for brunch. And well, by the way, right. I, that's why I said to Ross and uh, Marie, yeah. you said your aura ring mentions if you have alcohol at night, yeah. do some day drinking <laughs> and enjoy. You're done by but 6 p.m. No harm, best. no foul. You get a good night's sleep. You're ready for work the next day. Yeah. <laughs> I, I like the I, idea of day I'm dating. Fine that, with it. You know, you've just turned it all over. That's not what it's supposed to be. Oh, it's that's supposed right. to be no beer goggles. You're supposed to be bright and bushy tail. Oh, habits not hard, Amber. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. Let's get to this last one before right, we wrap right. us up. Uh, this month, Milan police had to shut down a red carpet event. Oh, what? yes, they did. Oh, okay. An actual fashion emergency took place on a red carpet because it had to be shut down. Timothy Chalamet is just way too hot. Variety <laughs> reports that the Milan premiere of Bones and All, Timothy's latest movie, drew such an enormous crowd that police had to shut it down saying it was a public hazard. Wow. People are cray-cray for the Chalamet. Yeah. Yeah. Well, for the we he obsessed. does a red carpet yes. like no one else. Our favorite look ever that he did was that red sort of backless thing. Yes, he, the halter top. Yes, I basically. threatened I've that. I've never I was, seen a man in backless. I know, I'm doing it. <laughs> I love it. Tune in to Drew's News all next week. I'll be backless. <laughs> right. Ratings are going to get through the roof. Well, let's do it. You know, there, was the, yeah, yeah, there was the shirtless look as well, which Absolutely. you could perhaps rock for the following oh, yeah, week. I don't think so. But <laughs> that sounds like him. Elvis, though. Closing down like totally. a red carpet is is like what used to happen to Elvis. And right? the Beatles. It's exciting yeah. to have someone on the scene that really brings this out in, you know, mm. female fans or totally. fandom in general. Yeah. Like, it's movie stars. It's it's entertainers. Um, uh-huh. We've always uh, invested in people that we thought could 
kind of create this chaos at an event. There's a thrill about it. Mm -hmm. So good for Timothy Chalamet. But also Drew Barrymore on the carpet uh, would have Hello. me like going gaga. Well, thank you, Vlad. <laughs> I, 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 that, those are fun. Those are creamy <laughs> events. And then it's back to reality like Cinderella. They're my favorite things. You know, I covered the red carpets forever. I love it for a moment. And I love when, uh, when a, a guy comes out and has a fashion moment. Yeah, right. you know, yeah. Because we always yeah. are drooling for the women. They do things. But, but when men sort of uh, go outside of that box of like, a little black suit or like something. Billy Porter. Yeah. Like when yeah. Billy yeah. Porter is on the red yeah, carpet, yeah. it's like yeah. amazing. I feel like yeah. everybody, like Sebastian Stan and Jake Gyllenhaal, they're mm -hmm. all working with the stylist, you know, um, who puts them in these pink suits. Yeah. And, you know, is I, I think that stylists, you know, there's La Roche who like does Zendaya and they really are thinking about it and they're creating that excitement and that drama. And look, I miss a Bjork swan every once in a while. <laughs> I'm like, oh give God, me, never I didn't never care if you so get it wrong, that's the but point. stop with the yes. safety of the men in the penguin suits and the women in the strapless, you know, uh, uh, sweetheart. It's like, uh, give me, I, I want to love it or hate it. Give me I, unique. Right. Yeah. Give yeah. me a Exciting moment. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, a moment. Go yeah. for it. It's yeah. a red carpet. It's not serious. Have fun with it. Yeah. So true. Drew and Ross, thank you guys. We hope you this come back so more fun. often. Yeah, come back again. Right down the hall. Come on. You know how much we love coming here. I know. We're so <laughs> great for to having have you. Us. Thank you so much. CBS News is whole